Hello and welcome. We are here for our next happy at home session. It is April the 13th and we're going to be talking about you put that into a scrapbook and basically what I want to talk about are those over the top pages that we make. We get this idea and we're like, can I do that? Is that allowed? Should I, should I do that? I don't know. And I think that these pages can be so much fun for us and they're a great way to explore our creativity, which is what this whole month is about. So I think it's the perfect thing. Um, we are going to be looking at a lot of layouts today. I know yesterday was a lot of layouts. We'll get back into some other stuff um, in the next few days, but I just really want to show you guys all this. They are the things that um, when I think about the fun stuff that I've scrapbooked, I think about these pages. They are the pages that were like, oh, I can't believe I did that. That was really cool. And I think all of us should have that chance to make pages that make us that excited. So let me hear in the comments if you're here. So thanks. I already see some thumbs up. You guys are so sweet. Um, I Let me know in the comments, what is the strangest thing that you put onto a scrapbook page? Now I had to think a little hard about this to be able to say, what was the strangest thing I put on a scrapbook page? And why was that so hard? Because I've actually put a lot of different cool things on scrapbook pages. Now I'm going to say I'm actually terrible get, about getting my memorabilia on pages. I just am. I am trying really hard. I've set myself up a system to deal with memorabilia, but I'm still not good at it. However, there's some fun things that have made it on my pages. I've done a few cool techniques that I think were pretty awesome. And we're just going to look at a whole range of uh, fun things that might inspire you for your pages. So that is the plan for today. What was I going to start with? I was going to start with this one. Uh, this one right here. I'll start with this one right here. Hi, Jenny. And Vicky says hello. Lynn says hello. Gina says hello. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining me today. This is going to be a lot of fun. And hopefully you'll just get a couple of ideas. If you have a notebook and like a uh, paper, like pen and paper so that you can write down a couple ideas, you might want that because I pulled out some of my coolest things to show you today. Okay, so let's check this out. So here we go. This is an, a, a page that I made ages ago. Now this was before I even knew about cutting page protectors. I could do this so much easier now, but we're just going to pull it right out of the page protector and I'm going to show you. I obsessed over this page forever and ever because I had bought this red velvet and I had bought this red chenille. And I had this idea to make this really cool page about going to Rigoletto because I was pretty excited. It was my first opera. My first opera. I was so excited to go to the opera. So I wanted it to have all the drama of going to the opera for the first time. And so I created, I used this red velvet and the red chenille and a whole lot of glue dots. Let's see you guys, like those mini glue dots are my best friend. <laughs> so this is a piece from the Playbill. I uh, chopped it right up with my scissors and then it opens up to inside. How fun is this? And so inside I covered the background with um, vellum paper that had little music notes all over it. I used these big music notes. I actually have some pictures that are on hinges held with a little uh, flipper. And so you can see my journaling inside. Is it how could I possibly describe the excitement of attending my first opera? It is complicated to explain the emotion and the physical reaction that I felt. There is nothing like your first time at the opera. I felt like Julia Roberts in Pretty Woman. It was so good, I almost peed my pants. <laughs> the full 
whole symphony, the lighting, the vocals, the costumes combine to make an exhilarating performance. So <laughs> I talk all about it. Um, I share some behind the scenes moments right before the show started. My dress broke and thankfully we were still just getting dressed at my friend's mom's house and she was able to stitch me back in <laughs> to my dress. So really fun. You can see this part here. I created a little pocket so that I could share some of the things inside. Um, the little bill from the place that we grabbed a drink. The uh, part of the playbill that has, you know, kind of the good part, right? I also included some sheet music from Rigoletto in here. I came across it in one of my piano books and said, hey, that should go into my book. And so I was able to include all of these little pieces in here and talk about this amazing experience. <laughs> April says, you're giving me goosebumps. Your journaling takes me right back to attending the opera. <laughs> Yay! So because it was such a special experience for me, I wanted to create a page that really felt like it did it justice. And like nowadays, I could put this into um, something that would allow it to open. I, you know, I don't spend a lot of time going back to fix things. I got a different layout in the back here. It's holding me up. But um, I don't spend a lot of time going back to fix things. Once things are done, they're done. Move forward. Besides, taking this out of the packaging is almost part of the experience. If I covered up that red velvet, would it be nearly as awesome to explore? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. Okay. Um, so way back when we were first exploring scrapbooking and trying different things, um, you know, we went through different phases in what was cool in scrapbooking. One of the things that came into being cool were brads and raffia. So on this page here, I think I can do it without taking it out of here. I have some raffia tied around here. You can see we talked about large photos. If you missed that one, I think it was April the 4th. We talked about large photo scrapbooking. Here's an example of a large photo on a layout and large photos take up the whole page so you don't need a lot of extra embellishment. So my little bit of raffia that I have here, the little bit of ribbon that I've run here, and the little brads that I've decorated this giant O with, it's all I needed, right? To talk about how cool it was to see such a massive owl. Um, an abundance of wildlife is one of the things I love about living in Canada. I like how sweet. <laughs> I love looking back. Some of my journaling is so cheesy and some of it's just right. It's like the right amount of cheese. Um, okay. That's where we're going to stick the ones that I've showed you. Um, since raffia was such a thing, I just thought I would share this with you. Like we go through phases. Am I paper piecing little guys anymore on my pages? No. But that was a thing at the time. Uh, the letters cut out with my old Sizzix machine, that was a thing. But look at how cute the little raffia, my little raffia bale turned out. I still look at this page and think, that's adorable. Would I make it like this now? Probably not. But I think that um, it's a great sign of the times. I even made a little lasso out of some twine and, and wrote my journaling in the twine. Like, I just think that these little things, while you look at it, I made my little barbed wire fence in the background. It's a little cheesy. It's a little, you know, it, it was what we did at the time. But I look at this now and that's really fun. The fact that there's eyelids on this page sets it at a date and time, right? <laughs> Gina says you can never have too much cheese. I am of that opinion. <laughs> Very much so. I love me some cheese. <laughs> So I just think showing you those kinds of things, and I'm gonna show you some old layouts because sometimes we have good ideas, especially when we don't have money. We might not have money to have all of the supplies. And so what do we do instead? We get creative, right? You get creative when you don't have access to certain things. And I think that 
um, you can look at it like, oh, I can't afford to buy all that fun stuff. Or you can say, look at how creative I have become because I didn't have access to all that fun stuff. So here's a page that's another oldie, an oldie but goodie, like I like to think. And this one is an egg hunt page. Now, there is really not that much special about this page except for these letters. Except for the cute little kids. Oh my god, they were so little. Um, <laughs> these letters are actually cut out of a photo that I took of the eggs that my kids died. So I took a picture of them sitting in the carton. You can kind of see parts of the carton here. And this is a picture of their eggs. And I cut them and turned them into the title. And that's just black marker around the edges, right? Like I just traced around the edges. But I think that this kind of creativity, when we're using the stuff that we have access to, the photos and stuff, I think it's such a good part of scrapbooking. Like how much cooler is this page because of the title? Now, do I wish that this paper matched the colors of this? Sure, but that's like a nowadays thing. That wasn't a then thing, right? I have different design style now. And, but like, you know, look how little my kids were. It was a long time ago. <laughs> Donna says, I have so many eyelets and brads that I just can't get rid of them. I've got some ideas. <laughs> just, just wait. <laughs> I got some ideas. Just wait. And I think as we experiment, we find the things that we love and the things that we don't love too. And so with this page here, I had this great big, it's like almost harder than chipboard. Um, it's maybe chipboard, I guess, like this big clock face that's in the background. Um, but it, it was just chipboard. And so I covered it in the gluey stuff and I used those little, uh, gold flakes. They were a Heidi swap gold flake. There's different kinds of gold flakes that you can put on them. And I pushed gold flake into this whole thing. And it was a mess and a nightmare. I hated every moment of making it, but look how pretty it is. <laughs> so appreciate it for the beauty right now, right? I appreciate it for the beauty. It is shiny and pretty. But that stuff was a nightmare. And you guys, I was telling you about this, right? Was I telling somebody about this the other day? This, this, uh, this wall that I had in my scrapbook room. I knew that I had scrapbooked it. There you go. I was looking for it on my phone, but yeah, I put together a wall. It's all my travel photos. So there we go. Not all of them. Heck, <laughs> it's only a small piece, but um, I think that by me testing this gold flake stuff, that was a valuable use of my time in the fact that I have determined that I'll never do that again. It's like you play with glitter a couple of times and you're like, no, I'm just done. I'm never doing glitter again glitter glue, bring it on. <laughs> but glitter, I, we're done. <laughs> we are not buddies anymore. Um, and so I use this like a timeline, right? So I used it to showcase the progression of the project. Sitting here on the floor forever, you know, with a sheet measured out to the size of the area it was going to, I didn't cut the chipboard. This piece came like this, Donna. Um, yeah. Um, getting my husband to help me prep all the frames because um, some of them didn't have hangers the way I wanted them to. Trying to get it onto the wall, finally getting it onto the wall, and then leaving the pictures there naked for a long time. They were empty. <laughs> and then finally choosing my photos and getting it onto my wall in the way that I wanted to. So I thought that was pretty fun, but let me tell you, that gold flake stuff, that's not happening anymore. That is just not me. But I think um, as we go, we get to see that progression. Like we get to see how far we've come. And if you want to see how far I've come, you guys have seen some of my pages now. And if not, look back yesterday. I um, showed you a ton. We'll see more today. Um, here's my very first page that I ever made. I went to a Creative Memories party and they told us to bring some pictures. So I brought some pictures. Now the pictures are not related to each other. <laughs> they are not related to each other at all, but they gave us a page with a protector. They gave us a uh, little um, corners, right? Some paper corners, 
some stickers. We got to pick a pack of stickers and I picked these confetti things. And I put my random photos on here with rounded corners. Ta-da! First page. Gilding flakes. Something like that, April. Yeah, those were gilding. Yeah, a gilding. I don't know. They were some Heidi Swap thing. I don't even think I have the jar anymore because I was like, no, honey, you just don't like doing this. <laughs> it was so not fun for me. Um, yeah, so this is my first page. And nowadays I make pages with very different style. But I look back to this. I laugh at my choices. I laugh at the pictures that I thought were fun. We had an adorable little dog. And, uh, you know... <laughs> just my comments on here are hilarious. So, you know, we're going to change and grow. We're going to go from wherever you're, you're starting look like. And I see people that started like three years ago and I'm like, ah, oh, you totally missed this. <laughs> you, you totally missed out on all of that. But that's okay, right? Like we have, um, we, we progress and we grow. And then we get all of these crazy ideas as we play, right? We find uh, um, things that are going to be super fun and we start testing and trying. And I think I pulled one of the layouts out of that one. Okay, this one gets to go back to the wall. <laughs> I have everything out. Like, look at my, my shelves behind me are empty. We're gonna see all the fun stuff, you guys. Um, but yeah, we test, we play, we explore. And so I um, I think sometimes you have to just go overboard to kind of really see like how much is too much. Is this too much? <laughs> is this too much? <laughs> I think that it's okay to try something and have fun with something and have it be too much. This page is more of an art page than a scrap of page. It has a picture of me and my cousin being crazy. I've got my title on here. It's in silver. I wish I had done black. Yeah, it's changed, right? Um, and I look at this and I think now that um, this is a lot of buttons. <laughs> and obviously it's not all buttons. So somebody said they had a lot of brads and eyelets and stuff. <laughs> Check it out. There, I don't think there's eyelets on here because that was an extra layer of difficulty. But there are flowers, there are little metal embellishments, there are sparkles, there are shapey things, there are little, yeah, there are little everythings on here. And the page weighs a million tons. <laughs> it is so heavy. It is the heaviest page. But I had a really fun time putting it together because I had this fun idea and I really wanted to just play. Great way to use up your stash. <laughs> if this is fun for you, right? If your goals with scrapbooking are different, um, if the creativity isn't high on your list of things that you want to do when you're scrapbooking, if you're task focused and you want to just make the pages, then this is like, wow, that's ridiculous. <laughs> and I think that's okay. I think we're allowed to have both. Like personally, sometimes I am making the page because I got a story to tell. And sometimes I'm here to play and have fun and experiment. And then we make stuff, right? And none of it's wrong. Yeah, Gail says it's fun to do. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, and I'm having that kind of fun all of the time. Here is a page that I had made. I showed this yesterday because we talked about um, some other stuff with um, the, the A side, B side papers. But this one here, um, I turned into a giant pocket. I used a full 12 by 12 um, acetate sheet to turn the whole thing into a shaker pocket with lots of lovely little sequins and sparkly blingy pieces. You know, this page could have been done a lot faster if I hadn't done it like this. But when I pull this page out and I shake it, you seriously listen to that. It's so fun. <laughs> it's so fun. 
Uh, let's see. April says, I remember a creative memories equating vellum to peanut butter because it wasn't acid free. You wouldn't put peanut butter on your layout. Great logic there. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> oh, so funny. And it's fun to see our earlier pages. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, don't put peanut butter in your layout. Like, your kids are going to touch it. If you have little kids, they might touch it. And, like, you know, make them wash their hands first. No peanut butter. <laughs> Marsha said she got scolded by the Creative Memories lady at the first party she went to because her photos didn't go together. I titled my page Summer 1995, and it looks much like yours, but it still makes me smile. I love that, right? Like... How was I to know? They just said, bring four or five pictures. They didn't say, bring four or five pictures that go together so that you can, like, create a page about something. So, my page was just all random. <laughs> uh, so, as we explore and play, we're going to play with different uh, mediums. So, maybe stamping is something that you'll play with. Uh, I personally love stamping very much. So, this was the page that I made where I stamped all the things. If you want to see it, there is a pay, um, there is a video on my YouTube where I show this page coming into action. Uh, stretch your stamps, so check for that one. Um, but I really love playing with stamps. And so what I discovered since I love playing with stamps, those are things that are good for me to invest in um, certain kinds of stamps. <laughs> And maybe not as many as I have, but there's something that if I find ones that I can use again, like these stripes, I really love those stripes, um, then they, they can be valuable in my stash, right? They, they can be valuable. And I think that's part of the fun is figuring out what's fun for us. I love multi-layered stamps because I don't have to be a good colorer. <laughs> color? Is that a real word? Um, I don't have to be good at coloring to make something that I think turns out great. As we experiment, we try different things like sparkles and, and glitter, right? Sparkles and glitter. And you determine whether sparkles and glitter are your style. Uh, this page, I've got the sparkles all around the edge, and then I've got these black sparkles that kind of go right around the queen here. I think there's a couple sparkles that need a little replacement here. They're kind of out of a, they're out of alignment. How dare they? <laughs> the queen says, "Back in the line." <laughs> um, yeah, but you know, for me to create this page, a queen page needed a little bling, right? The lady wears a crown. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, uh, April says we all began somewhere and it's really fun to remember how and when we began. Oh yeah, Donna says we cut around the people. Oh, I didn't even pull that page. Oh, I think I have it maybe right here from the other day. I totally do. Yeah, cutting around the people. Here is one that I did with my little niece. I just loved her face and how excited she was and so... I made this page that kind of really just focused on the, the beauty of that photo. And you know, I've got a little bit of embossing to make it extra fun, but super cute, right? Um, as we explore, we're going to try different things. So maybe from stamping, we move on into embossing because embossing is like magic. And so on this page here, I tried some embossing where I just swiped my um, my ink, the watermark ink or whatever pad across here, and then I dumped embossing powder on here. I also played with foiling. We saw on the foiling day that foil that had the water, like the messy water, like the oil slick kind of <laughs> effect. Well, that's the same stuff that I used on that after I hand cut this word out too. So I really wanted to put my own hands into this and make it look like mucky fingers to showcase this adorable picture of my mom and her two little sisters. And they were playing in the mud by the house. So those hands are messy. <laughs> and I think that 
you know, yes, it's blue. I matched my title. I think the whole black kind of leads into the mucky. There's lots of ways you can make a page feel mucky. This one feels like glamorous mucky, right? To kind of have a little fun with it. Uh, my mother-in-law did the bubble cutting and I thought it was so terrible. I recently inherited her Creative Memories album of my son and I love the album, Bubble Cutting and All. <laughs> yeah, I, we call that silhouette cuts and um, yeah, cutting around all the people. Yeah, you know, it was a thing. It was a thing. <laughs> yeah. Donna says, after doing Creative Memories, try working at a scrapbook store on Saturdays. I had to have it all. <laughs> Jenny likes the embossing. Oh, it's so fun, right? Um, you know, as we play with materials, we, we play with acetate sheets. This whole background paper is an acetate sheet. Um, I don't know if that's even attached, actually. So you can, oh, I did attach it. So you can kind of see that it's separate. And you'll see that I did trace kind of around the florals because I wanted them to pop more because they were just, because I used the pink paper in the background, I needed the florals to pop more. So I had to put white in behind them. But I love, I loved the acetate sheet. And for me, being able to use that whole sheet as it was, but still get those florals to pop was a lot of um I just, I look at it, it's so pretty, right? <laughs> when we have these pretty things, then, you know, figuring out how to really make it work for us is good. It's tough because I needed paper behind it so I could add my journaling. And I didn't want to cover up too many of these flowers. I was already covering the one here. This was an observation that we had from one of my videos. Somebody's like, Alice, that crown behind you looks like it's on your head. And so we had this big laugh about that. <laughs> Now it's up on a wall far away. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a beautiful, um, you know, we're going to play with using lots of photos. And some pages have one photo and some pages have lots of photos. And this I thought was a really fun way for me to showcase my bag collection. <laughs> now they're not all fancy bags. <laughs> Most of them aren't and even the fancy ones have a story. <laughs> um, but, you know, here I was being the bag lady and I was, I did this hilarious, like goofy photo shoot, which is why I put my little pink wig on. And I posed with all of my funny little purses. <laughs> and so I laughed at this and, you know, the playfulness of this whole thing. But I think like, I wanted to show my collection. Why not have all the bags? Why not show how great all the bags are with my goofy personality in there? Um, let's see here. Um, you know, and as I get brave uh, with my creativity and testing and playing, um, one of the things that I, I did was I fiddled with my watercolor a little bit and I played with it. And so, you know, I don't pretend to be a watercolor artist, but I've made a couple of things that I think are really good. And one of them was this paper. So it is based on a picture that I took and I think it looks really fun. Like, it's hard to say, actually, to say, I made this and it is beautiful. Why is that so hard? Why is it hard to give ourselves that little pat on the back, that job well done when we make something? Is this using all the techniques of a real artist? I don't care. Look at how nice it is, right? And so I scrapbooked it and um, I'm just shocked at how, t how well it turned out. And I'm, it makes me think like what else can I do and I think that's what we should be doing as we test our boundaries right like sometimes I'm just making colorful backgrounds but what else can I do okay I learned how to blend my colors and fix my little my little colors up here so that my 
yellow wasn't blending with my blues and grays, but what else can I do? Yeah, we are our own biggest critics. It's so true. Other people look and they're like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. And I'm like, well, I didn't do this. How many times do we do that, right? How many times do we say, well, I didn't do this, or it's not this, or I could have done that. And I think that um, we have to just say, it's awesome. Yeah, I, I know. I love it too. And it's so hard. It was, it was hard to say it, but I, I love it. <laughs> This is not my writing. <laughs> Vicky says, I wish I could write like you. This is not my writing, but I have practiced and I write a little like that. <laughs> these are actually stickers, but these, this is my writing. And I try, like it's imperfect, but I try and it's good enough for me. It's good enough for me. That's for sure. Um, here's another artistic one that I did when I was playing with alcohol inks. And I wanted to see what it could do on non yuppo paper. Um, I made this background and it has all the colors and they're kind of bleeding out and feathering together. And I thought, wow, that's really pretty. That turned out way better than I thought it would. Gina says you should frame that. That'll go on my albums, right? Like, I think that honestly, my albums are where I put all of my art. This is my art. And how hard is it to call it art? It's hard, but this is my art. Um, I was actually a guest on a podcast, um, art, artful, art, art, artistically you. Oh, sorry guys. I should know. Um, I think, oh, artistically you podcast with Jenna Oliveira. Uh, it looks like this one right here. Can you see? Oh, shoot. Sorry. Artistically You podcast. Um, I was a guest on it a while ago and we talked about art and claiming your space as an artist because in scrapbooking, we don't really talk about ourselves like that. But I look at this page and like looking at that background, me cho choosing to use the stencil that I put here, all of the things that I put, all of the selections that I made, that's part of my art. Nobody else makes a page like this. Nobody else has a page like this. <laughs> Vicki says, I saw one the other day, which was your writing. And it looks a lot like that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, I will have a few. Um, it's definitely something I've played with. Um, you know, I think when we get introduced to interesting new materials, they lead us to try really fun and interesting things. Um, years ago, close to my heart released little springs. And I was like, what do I do with little springs? And then along came this page and you can see the springs here where I popped up some of these like little bursts and how perfect was that for a pop rocks page, right? To add that kind of little bit of fun and interaction. It just feels right. And I think the other day I showed you guys the one with my, the fishing where I also used the springs where I brought the fish up a little bit closer because it was like an inside joke as to <laughs> what you can do. Um, when you're trying to take a fish picture, right? Let's see here. Like this one here, right? I showed you guys this one. And the fish is out on the springs. But I just had, to, I printed two copies of this photo so that I could pop it up on there. <laughs> but, but yeah, like I think getting introduced to new materials, new things like that. It's one of the reasons when uh, last year when they released the stamping foam, like Simon Hurley released his stampin' foam. And it's just a little piece of gray foam. I'm like looking, so I'm thinking it's here on my desk, but I just, I just rearranged a bunch of stuff. So anyways, it's a little piece of gray foam. You heat it a little bit, you press it into something that has texture, and then you put your ink on the foam and press it onto things. Well, I had the best time playing with that actually last year during the happy at home. I think we used it. Um, and 
it was just a new material and it was so much fun. Gina says, I love that it shows your playful side. And, oh, the alcohol ink background. It would. Marcia says the alcohol ink background would have been awesome for the Northern Lights. Right? That would be super fun. Right? Oh. A Northern Lights page with that. Oh. <laughs> I have some Northern Lights pictures that I took here recently, actually. Um, you know, sometimes necessity leads us to creativity. Uh, how many times have we had these little frames and not known what to do with them because our pictures don't fit in them and trying to cut our pictures down to fit in them is a nightmare. So necessity breeds creativity. I look at these frames. I'm like, they're so nice. I love them. But what am I going to do with them? <laughs> right? I can't use them. I can't frame anything with them. They just don't work. And so this page was inspired by another one I made, which was inspired by another person's page. Shout out Melinda Greer. <laughs> and, you know, using the frames in this way was so much fun. Yeah. April says sucking at something is the first step to sort of being good at being sort of good at something. There's a reason that it's become a thing. Honestly, when... <laughs> If you talk to a kid that was like five years old, six years old, and you said to them, here, I want you to try this. Here, I want you to try this. Here's some watercolor. Sit down and watercolor something. Are they going to make art? Are they going to make a mess? Are they going to just play and experiment? Like, why do we expect ourselves to be magically good at something when we don't have years of experience? We haven't put in the time to practice. It's like doing that hand lettering, right? That, that we were talking about a moment ago. Like, I'm getting better at it because I practice it, but I'm not great at it yet because I haven't put in the time that's required to make myself great at it yet. Um, yeah, I think... It's really funny that we try something a couple times and be like, oh, I'm just really bad at that. We didn't even try it yet. Like we barely skiffed the surface of it and we already are thinking we're bad at it. And we wouldn't put that expectation on anybody else. Like nobody. <laughs> so sorry. Rant over. <laughs> Rant over. Um, I just really think we need to you know, be kinder to ourselves, especially when we're trying something new. Um, embracing new products, like I said, um, when these products first came out, I was obsessed and I'm still obsessed. Uh, these are flip flaps. You can't really see them because it just looks like a layout. But on this layout, this one looks like it's a little crooked. Um, it all flips out so I can have more stuff. <laughs> All of, oh, not that one. Uh, this one and this one. All of them are flipping out so I can have all the fun things. And I made this page as lessons I learned as a child. And I love the paper. The paper is adorable. So it was like the perfect choice for this. It takes me back to my childhood. It's sweet reminds me of like wallpaper that we would have had it reminds me of the print on the dresses that I would have had and it has just allowed me to bring so much fun into my albums through layering things up flip flaps these ones are from uh close to my heart uh they work amazing they stick amazing they're fantastic I can't recommend them enough um and like look at how simple my journaling was right all of the planning was in making my little flaps. So I have some pearls. <laughs> I have some flowers. Oh, my title. That's it, man. <laughs> Sometimes layouts are just that easy. <laughs> Today, Ella showed us this page. She was totally flipping out. <laughs> totally flipping out. I know. I love it. And you know, so lessons I learned as a, as a child, if there's a job to do, just slap on a hard hat and get her done. <laughs> uh, keep in touch with your friends. Like that's the old, uh, a cow says moo. 
Oh my gosh, where is that? Page? Oh, I think I know where that is. Okay, let's see. I got 20 minutes left, so I have to I have to pay attention to time. Okay, because flip flops are so great and amazing, they also make them in other sizes. So can you see the flip flop? I can see the flip flop. <laughs> This is a giant flip flap and it allowed me to hide all of this extra stuff underneath, which I thought was really, really fun. So all my Easter pictures hiding underneath. And let's be real, when we take our Easter pictures, kids are maybe in pajamas, maybe in clothes. Like they're looking like they just woke up first thing in the morning. <laughs> You know, it's not always the prettiest picture. It's kind of like Christmas morning. It's like, why do we do this to ourselves? <laughs> but um, yeah, I love being able to have all of that here. Because now I look at that and I'm like, oh, this is so cute. Oh, and you want to use up some more of those brads or eyelets or enamel dots, something that you have a lot of. A cute little circle of embellishments around something else is a great way to just get a few more little pieces on there. <laughs> Okay, don't let that tower fall over. Okay, um, something fun. Something fun, because we get creative. Maybe you have played Monopoly, and so nowadays they make this paper, you can buy a sheet of Monopoly paper. I didn't get that opportunity. <laughs> this one I had to make myself. And it's been through the ringer and back, it looks like. It's got a little bit of sun damage because I've left it sitting out on a counter. So note to self, put your stuff away. Um, but yeah, I copied little images and I drew stuff. And I designed the whole board as much as I could to make it fit onto this. Took pictures of things and included a picture with myself and my brothers. And then I went around the board and told stories that I remembered playing Monopoly because we played it a lot. So when you're going around the board, it tells you things like my brothers and I love to play Monopoly. We did make up some of our own rules. <laughs> you never had to pay income tax. Like, isn't that the world we wish we lived in now? <laughs> you won money for landing on free parking. All the money the bank was supposed to collect went to free parking. <laughs> I was always the banker. My favorite piece was the battleship. And I go on, right? So I just think it's really, um, you know, fun to dive in. And even though this page took forever to make, it's pretty great. <laughs> it's pretty great. Uh, I don't think I had other ones in this book that I wanted to go to. Don't worry. Trust me. I got some fun ones. <laughs> So this one can go back to the shelf. Um, oh, just trying to think, like, what should go next? Like, but I think, okay, we talked about shakers. Well, on that one, I did little shakers. On this one, I did a giant shaker. This whole page, this whole heart is a giant shaker filled with little sequins. And I used vellum and I did texture stuff with a little bit of color on the background and I've got Nuvo drops on here and like I was having so much fun putting this page together to talk about this and uh can I just read you a piece of the story so you look at this and you're like how sweet is that they went on a date it was for Valentine's Day that's amazing but here's the secret for Valentine's Day, Jonas surprised me with tickets to a special dinner and Neil Diamond impersonator. I thought it was so sweet that he knew that I like Neil Diamond music. I, my husband's not really into music. We don't normally do anything special for Valentine's Day. Well, the intention was good, but the performer was not. We had dinner. It was yummy. Then the show started. It was bad. So we left early. Too bad. I know Jonas just wanted me to be happy. He really loves me. And that ties back to my title, Love Me Do. So <laughs> I thought it was funny. I made this one during the Beatles. So Love Me Do, you know, titles and stuff like that. 
really fun. Uh, April says she was always the iron, and I couldn't have told you that until this moment when the memory just came back. <laughs> I know, so fun, right? Um, playing with stamps. Um, each one of these little cards in the background is a little stamped piece that I did using turnabout stamps. And so it's a little time consuming because you stamp each image four times with four different colors and you're turning it and doing it. But I just look at this background and like, how much fun is that? Right? So fun. I know. This is hilarious. It's like this super sweet page, but like that impersonator was terrible. We had to get out of there. <laughs> yeah, this is my little nephew. I didn't think I had anything hedgehog, but I made this page during Calvin Ball. I can tell because it has a butterfly, a leaf, a flower, a mushroom, enamel dots. It's got stamps. It's got a wood veneer. It's got a label. It's got a doily. It's got a frame. It's got a birdhouse. It has stars. It has hearts. It has twine. It has, uh, I think letter stickers were a thing. I think <laughs> um, hedgehogs were a thing. I don't know. So funny. Anyways. So funny. I think that was the ones in here. I don't think I had. Oh, no, I had one more back here that I want to show you guys. Um, so this one here, we're back to flip flaps again. And um, this was a year in, re year in review page. So I have um, 20 in 2020. And then this one flips out. And then this one here with the cute little um, wood veneer that I painted gold and then filled in the back um, also flips out. And so I've included memes about 2020. I've included lots of story spaces in here and lots and lots of little photos and apparently one that's falling off. <laughs> Must have been when I had some bad uh, adhesive, but um, yeah, I really like this because it gave me a good look at some of the fun that we had this year. And I labeled the photos, just used little stickers, and then I was able to tell different little stories all on one page to wrap up that year. So, lots of fun with that. Um, that one can go back to the wall. Sometimes you take a class. Sometimes you take a class for inspiration and they show you the coolest things ever, right? We've all taken some great classes. This page is my boys. I've got Joe and Ryan and it says, mmm, pancakes. Who loves pancakes the most? And then it says pull. And when you pull down, it actually pops up. And that is my niece, Emily. And Emily loves pancakes the most. <laughs> she stayed with us for a whole month and asked for pancakes every single day. And she was so joyful. I just made them for her every day because she was such a delight. So yeah, yeah. Emily loves pancakes the most. And I just like, it's like such a fun technique. I think I've done little workshops. I know in Scrap Happy, we definitely have a workshop that teaches you how to do this. Um, I don't know if I have one on my YouTube channel. I'd have to, I'd have to look. <laughs> if anybody really wants to know, <laughs> let me know. Um, flip flaps, you see those flipping around here? I think there was another one in here. Um, just more flip flaps right on the pages. Here's another page that I did with that same um, effect with the alcohol inks and more flip flaps and stacked flip flaps even. Yeah, so fun stuff. Um, I think sometimes we think that stuff has to be complicated I see where the happy at home logo. <laughs> what a great thing to come from 2020. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That was in that, that was that year we started happy at home because I felt so uncomfortable in March and I'm like, we need something to look forward to in April. Um, so yeah. Um, doing creative things doesn't have to be hard. It doesn't have to be complicated and it doesn't have to be like with all of the products. So I just wanted to show you this page because 
I've ripped different colors of blue paper. I've ripped gray paper to make mountains. <laughs> and I added a little bit of magic mesh kind of sparkly stuff here. It's not magic mesh. It's magic. I don't know. Some kind of magic stuff. It's like little bits of plasticky, shiny stuff to add a little bit of stuff here. This is a picture that my husband sent me from the trip. And this was the tech or this was the text that my husband sent me when he heard what my son had said. And so I have a picture of Joe. <laughs> Joe saw the sign that said bunny hop and said, Ooh, bunny hop, that sounds dangerous. <laughs> and it's just such a good capture of a personality here. And it's one line, right? Like it's one line of journaling. I think journaling can be effective with short amounts when you tell the story right. I didn't need to tell it more. This was the story. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it, it can be fun, right? Um, I thought I had another one in here. Uh, those collage pages with all the photos, again, going back to all the photos. When you have a whole bunch of photos that are part of all one thing, getting the chance to see them all in one spot can be really cool. Like maybe you've scrapbooked like this story and this story and this story already, but putting them all together on a collaboration page can be super cool. These are all pictures. My son gave them to me um, of him at Westminton mall. And so for me to have this page that shows all of the things, I kind of really love it. And I think putting that together and seeing that is, uh, is a pretty cool thing. Um, let's go back here. Oh, uh, talking about things being simple. Um, the fields around here, when you fly over them, they really do look like this. There's, a green field, a yellow field, a green field, a yellow field. It's just like a big checkerboard um, from above. And so I made my own checkerboard to go with this photo showing the canola fields. Because the canola flowers are really, really bright, 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 bright yellow. <laughs> that is not color edited to look like that. They are that bright. So really fun. Um, another little simple technique tearing back the inside and just rolling the pieces back so that you have a little piece that sits framing your photo that looks sneaking in from the back right the tear and roll very fun and i think that was it here This one's in my husband's book. And here I've added a zipper to my page. No, it doesn't zip up. <laughs> it does not zip up. But I've taken the paper and I've bent it over so that it looks like you're looking into his little Superman. And I put him in here and talked about how he's like a superhero. So I thought that was pretty pretty fun take on uh, playing with that. Um, yeah. Oh, this is fun. Okay. This is fun. So here is a page that I made with that shrink plastic. Has anybody ever played with shrink plastic before? Maybe not for a while. Did you know you can color your shrink plastic with your alcohol markers? If you have some alcohol markers, you can color it with those and shrink them up and make little charms or something, which we saw um, when I showed you. This one. When I showed you here, you can take your shrink plastic and make cute little charms like that, right? Or what I did here was did a partial shrink 
on this. I partially shrunk it with some wonky circles and I made these pieces that look like the glasswork at the Chihuly Museum. Uh, April says I've made bookmark charms. <laughs> so yeah, um, not every piece that I made worked out. Some of them were too tall for me to put onto a layout. These ones are pretty chunky. <laughs> but I think just taking one of these products like a shrink plastic and playing with it was so much fun. Drink charms, says April. Bookmark charms. It was a trend at one point. Absolutely. The drink charms. <laughs> they still kind of make sense. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the, the glass work at the Chihuly Museum was amazing. And I have incredible photos. And, you know, how do you, how do you capture that? So I made my own art. And so it was like inspired by that, right? Um, oh, pink. I think I left it open with that one for a reason. Yeah, I don't think there was another one in here. But I think that's good. Hue. Here's something that we talked about a little bit the other day was having pages that have a QR code so that when you turn your camera on on your phone it sees that you can see it's popping up it says YouTube when I click that link it will take me to the video okay right So it takes me right to the video, and then I have this video. Are you okay? With this. Every time. And that's it. That's the end of the video. It's short. It's a. It's a really quick little jump where my son jumps off this great big mountain of snow. I was terrified because it was so tall, but. You know, the picture is good. I have captured the stuff. This was using real cameras back in that day. Remember that when we had real cameras? But I've captured the action, but you haven't captured everything sometimes. And if you have a video, that little QR code can be so amazing because you can link it to a little video and that's it. It's so easy. You flip the page. Oh, look, there's a QR code. I wonder what that's for. And then you see it. I get to hear his little voice with his tiny, tiny little baby voice. Like, that's just adorable. Uh, flip flaps gone wild. Yes, I've got lots of them here. What else did I have? I had something else in here that I wanted to share. Um, what I did. Oh, maybe this isn't the one. The other book. Huh. Here's a shocking page, guys. Frames actually used as frames. <laughs> <laughs> talking about frames frames as actual frames oh yeah there wasn't anything else in this one well that's fun <laughs> I laid down tape and then pulled it up and sprayed it and pulled it up and sprayed it and yeah yeah it's fun oh the fun that we can have when we just play right okay um trying to decide craziest thing that I've put into a book. Hmm. I do have lots of crazy things, but I have lots of fun things here. So, um, we talked about sparkles and sometimes more sparkles is more sparkles. So more is more. Uh, we've talked about playing with stencils this past couple weeks, right? We've been done doing a little exploration with stencils. This is like, just like ink blending with stencils and flip flaps so I can include more cause I was a little princess and had all the little dresses. So we got to show that. <laughs> um, did anyone have a read along books when you were a child? 
Uh, I um, question, Jackie says, do you always put your flip flops on the outside of the page protector? Yeah. That way you can actually flip and interact right there and everything is still kind of protected. Um, I also only use binder style books because I like to be able to move things around and at least then the flip flops can kind of stay with the page if you move it around. That would be the only reason that I wouldn't is if I needed to be able to move that page or something. But because I use binders, that's totally fine. Also, if I do something like with lots of flip flaps or whatever on a page like this, the backside won't have that apparently. I've, I pull pages out of here all the time and then leave myself notes as to what has to go back. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, I, I think that, um, they're, they're, they're awesome on the outside and they don't come off. Like you could pull them off, but you would have to pull them off. Like you, it's not going to come off by accident. Um, yeah, I had, I loved read along books. I had a little record player that would play my record, my, my read along books. And this is what the back page of all of those uh, read-along books looked like. It was this diagonal split with the yellow with a thing. There was a little picture here and then it would say see here read <laughs> at the bottom and there would be this um, thing with the green even. like So I looked at the back of one of these books and I recreated that. I even scuffed around here with a little bit of um, sanding block so that the record would look scuffed just right. <laughs> yeah, I love binder style pages. Me too. I need to be able to move stuff around and shuffle things and there's just no more post bound for me. Um, yeah, I just thought this was super fun. Great way to bring that in. You can bring a little bit of fabric into your books. It's not against the rules. You, it, It's yours. You own it. So you can do it if you want. Um, Glitter paper. This one here, I turned this one into a Nancy Drew page. And I've got the great big magnifying glass on there. And then I, uh, I did all the words to line up with this that would hopefully describe myself, which I thought was pretty fun. So tenacious, optimistic, <laughs> distinctive. Super funny. Um, and yeah, that's good. So fun. Okay. How's our time? Oh my gosh, I'm over. But I have to show you this. I have to show you this. Oh my gosh. I can't believe it. Um, okay. Shoot. I don't want to leave anything out now because I've got all these fun things set aside. Okay. I'm just going to keep going until, until I have to go. I do have to go today. Um, okay, there. This one I pulled out so that I could show you. Yes, my map page. So I've got the map, and you'll notice the map has highlighting on it because it's the map we actually used. So it's wrinkled, it's messed. It's imperfect, a little worn out in spots, but it's the actual map we used. And I think that it was just so much fun. Go for it, I'd love to see. So I I love the layout that Nancy Drew fan might have to scrap loved it. Please, if you do and you share it somewhere, let me know. If you don't like sharing on social media, send it to me, like seriously, I just, I would love to see. I would be so excited. Um, yeah, must see everything in Rome. Our hotel has to have a picture there. Obviously that didn't get printed, but I showed the different things from the different places and I used the washi tape to kind of point to different things on the map. I think that was hilarious. I think it was so fun. Um, I showed you this one of my son with the Leaning Tower when we talked about big pictures, but like, <laughs> This one, I barely had to do anything. This just makes me laugh. Here we are trying to pretend that we're the sign. <laughs> like, <laughs> how can that not be more awesome? Um, I, sh I think I showed you, I don't know if we've talked about this actually. Really fun idea. If you have a postcard from somewhere and you want to show the front 
And the back, obviously you can put it into a pocket, you could put it into a flip flap, that would be perfect for it. But if you don't have something like that, you can cut a hole in your paper, lots of our paper is double sided paper, and you can use both sides. So I just framed it in here, I held it in from the barest of edges, and I have the postcard in here just held on from the center so that you can see the front and the back. And it was my snail mail page because what did it take? Four months or something to arrive? <laughs> yeah, four months. <laughs> but, you know, it's the crate. This is where we went. So, um, let's see. I thought I had one more. Oh, I wonder if I had the other one pulled out. You know, extremes of things. Extremes of things are super fun. Extremes of sequins, also super fun. Nightmare to stick down, but super fun when you look at it afterwards, right? <laughs> and will it, will it spill some sequins? Sure, from time to time, but it's in a page now. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. Yeah. Okay. So that was there. Ooh, I know there's one that missing from my Cuba one because I, oh, I wonder where I pulled that one out to. My Cuba one. I used a piece of stuff from a coconut palm tree. <laughs> it went on my page. I don't know where that one is. Apparently, because it should have been in that book, but it wasn't. All right. This is from my trip to India book. And I wish I had more pages done in it, but I saw this cow eat a paper bag <laughs> like in the street. So I made my own little mini paper bag and filled it with raffia. You guys see this raffia coming back again? <laughs> and I just thought that was, um, you know, an interesting thing. Like I talk about how startled I was when I saw it. Um, another painting that I did. Here is the original photo, and I have reproduced kind of that, my own interpretation of it. I have the page made with Close to My Heart Paradise paper. Yes, I know, I love that paper. Um, this one I thought was interesting too. So we accidentally crashed a wedding <laughs> when we were in India. Our um, our driver kind of, we, we asked him what the noise was and so he walked us into this thing and then we were in there and we're like, oh my gosh, this is a wedding. <laughs> we didn't know. And um, as he left, as we left, he grabbed goodie bags for us. I'm like, how embarrassing. Not only did we crash this wedding, but then we get goodie bags from the wedding. Like, it was so crazy. But... Um, it was also really beautiful and I was really excited to have seen a piece of that. Um, but I took a piece of this goodie bag and I, I had to cut it down so it wasn't as thick. So I have just the front piece, but I took the front panel of it and have that in my book. So thank you to R. Preeti and S. Savannah <laughs> for, for putting up with us being at your wedding, whether you wanted us there or not. <laughs> um, yeah, super fun things. Yeah, I think that was good. I think the little creative bits that we that we do, that we put into our books, that we put into our albums, it's it's so worth it, right? Um, you know, going parasailing. You'd never scrapbook this little photo. But on this page, it totally makes sense, right? Um, let's see, I thought I had another one tagged. Um, more painting of my own. Playing with paper cutting and rolling and painting. Yeah, lots of fun stuff. Lots of fun stuff. Um, some 
thing that I think everybody can relate to is the extremes of Disney. And uh, this is one of my very favorite Disney pages I've ever made, <laughs> which is kind of sad because it is a very sad page in some ways. But this is my little Ryan when uh, he was told that he was too small to go on a ride. And sometimes we think, like, I, I know I've showed you over the top pages today. And I think this is probably a good place for us to kind of wrap. But um, sometimes we think over the top is the way. But sometimes the way that we can make a simple page is so much better and so perfect. So I made the word two really big and small, quite small, right? Because small should be small. And then I've got his little crying sad face <laughs> where he looks so pathetic. I've got my little bit of journaling, but my accent on this page, my only accent is this little measuring chart. And he was too small to ride the ride. And did I need anything else? The simplicity of this page makes it have such impact, right? Like you can do all kinds of crazy things and all kinds of fun stuff when you're making your pages, like spell out your California with the California letters, which I heard are no longer there. But, um, yeah, and Disney pages lead to like so much fun and so much creativity. But, you know, sometimes we can just do something simple and it has a lot of impact. So I would encourage you after all of the fun and crazy things that I've showed you today to really look at your scrapbooking with fresh eyes and say, where's the fun? Like, what would be fun for me? And don't expect that it's always going to be amazing. I look at lots of things I've made and they're not amazing. But if I'm having fun when I'm trying it, and if I happen to wreck a piece of paper, oh wow, like, do I not have 20 billion other pieces of paper in this scrapbook room? <laughs> like, I, I do, I, I, I can assure you, I do. <laughs> So it, we can make pages that have big impact, pages that we put crazy things onto, pages that we do incredible techniques, pages where we put tons of photos, pages where we have one photo. And all of these things can lead to us making pages that have a um, massive impact, pages that, you know, people might be surprised that we put that on a scrapbook page. But I think that that's part of the magic of what we do. Scrapbooking doesn't look the same for anybody. It's an individual adventure. And if I have encouraged you to try something that might be like a little beyond your comfort zone or a little beyond that, or, you know, you're just like going to go all in and try something wild, then I feel like I've done my job right? My job here is to inspire you and get you to try something that you're like, hmm, I can't believe I did that <laughs> because that's where the fun is. Uh, yeah, no, so sad they took our letters away. No more seeing them grow with the letters. I know, I know. When I heard that, I'm like, why? Those were awesome. I love the letters. Anyways, um, thank you so much for joining me for this happy at home today. We will be back tomorrow, same place, same time. Oh, <laughs> I do have to go now. <laughs> that is my next alarm. Um, we'll be back tomorrow, same place, same time. And we will be bringing you a brand new topic. I think we got to get my fingers messy again. We got to do something that gets us in there. So watch for that tomorrow. I just got really excited about all of these fun types of pages today and I'm excited to share that with you. Hopefully it just inspired you to try something. And if you do, show me, show me, show me, show me. I would love to see. You can tag me on Instagram at Alice Bowl. You can connect with me through Scrap Happy. Um, if you're on my email list, the scraphappy.org slash subscribe, 
you can reply to one of my emails. I, I do get them. I try to reply. I'm kind of terrible with email, but you know, I do try to reply to all of that. Um, if you're looking for products that I've used, some of these ones you may not be able to find, but I do list all my favorite products on my faves page. So scrabhappy.org slash faves. So you can check that out. And as a reminder, I'm just going to say, um, our load is open for registration right now. We are scrapbooking every day in May inspired by architecture. It's going to be great. It's not about buildings. It's not about the architecture. It's going to be about your stories to tell you, to get you scrapbooking your stories, but inspired by architecture. So lots of fun coming up. And we'll be back tomorrow for more happy at home time. So thanks for joining me. I hope you have a great day and happy scrapping.